What's going on? Welcome to this LC7i discussion video. This is episode two of my complete overhaul of the mediocre stock sound system in my 2020 STI. If you're thinking about upgrading your factory sound system, you may have heard that you need a line out converter. The LC7i is an active line out converter with some very useful advanced features. Be sure to check out the video description for links to everything you see in the video and other useful information. Let's get to it. Now that we have this thing unboxed, it's worth noting that it doesn't include any wiring at all or any mounting hardware, so it is up to you to decide what you need and get it ahead of time. The design and placement of the tuning knobs is very intuitive, which is helpful. Inside the converter, there are some jumper settings, which I will show you, but first, let's go over what it does so you can decide if you might benefit from it or not. The LC7i is an active line-out converter, and what a line-out converter does is it takes your speaker-level inputs from your car, from your radio, and it converts them into low level signals that an amplifier can use, like this amplifier right here. Now, you can get passive line out converters and you can get active line out converters. An active line out converter like this LC7i is far more feature rich. This LC7i has three sets of inputs that you can apply to it and corresponding three sets of outputs. For example, in my build, I have two front speakers, two rear speakers, two tweeters. The tweeters are connected in parallel with the front speaker, so really it's four channels. So you have your two front and your two rear. So in my case, I'm gonna take the speaker level inputs for those four channels and I'm gonna connect them to these two inputs right here. And then the LC7i is gonna take the output of those four speakers and convert them into four low level outputs right here. If you have an upgraded stereo, chances are you probably don't want to replace the head unit because there's a lot of functionality that's wrapped up into that stereo. Things like GPS, your telematics unit, all that stuff goes through the factory head unit and it's a pain in the butt to actually replace the head unit and retain all of that functionality. So if you want to add aftermarket amplifiers to your car, especially if it has an upgraded sound system, then you would get an active line converter like this LC7i to do the job because it already accepts up to 400 watts per channel. Upgraded factory sound systems will oftentimes have built-in crossovers. In other words, the receiver will send lows to the subwoofer, it'll send highs to the tweeters, and it'll send your mid frequencies to your woofers on your doors. That means that you can't really grab any one of those signals and have a full signal come out. So what this LC7i will do is it'll accept those different frequencies and it'll sum them. There's summing circuitry inside the LC7i and it'll output a full range signal up here. Now, each input right here will correspond to output up here. So if you notice right here, there's two, four, six. If you connect just two speakers right here, you can output those two speakers up here. If you connect two speakers there, you'll output it right here and the same thing for the third channel right here. So I'm using this LC7i to drive two amplifiers. Let me show you something, right? So I have an inline amplifier right here that's meant to drive my door speakers. What I can do is I can take the input of the inline amplifier and I'll connect them to these four channels right here, just like that. Now I have a very clean low level signal for my inline amplifier. And then I have a spare channel right here for the amplifier that will drive my subwoofer. So like I said earlier, my car has only four channels, two front, two rear. So I'll connect two here and two here. So you might be wondering, where's it gonna get the input to drive channel three right here? And there's a dip switch inside that you can set, I'll show you in a minute. It'll take your channel two inputs and it'll copy it to channel three so that I can drive the amplifier that's gonna ultimately drive the subwoofer. Now there's something very special that this particular line of converter does, which is the main reason why I got it and that's that it'll correct for base roll off. So I have a 2020 STI and I previously had a 2017 regular WRX and those cars, the base is severely rolled off. And the reason why that base is rolled off is because Subaru and most other manufacturers install very cheap speakers in their car, right? So this is a speaker that came out of my 2020 STI. It's a very cheap speaker, max 35 watts. So if you had the head unit pumping out bass at high volume, there's a good chance that this, this speaker right here will just, it'll end up blowing. So in order to prevent cheap speakers like this from going, they put circuitry inside the head units to roll off the bass as you turn up the volume. What the LC7i will do is will correct for that and it'll add bass at the point where the factory head unit would have started rolling it off. That's important because I want my channel that's driving my subwoofer to have a full 
signal and I want the subwoofer that is made for low frequencies to actually sound good as I turn up my volume. And if you don't have that bass correction technology, the sub can start sounding a little hollow at higher volumes. That is a huge feature that you don't get with passive line-out converters. This LC7i has it. The fact that I have separate channels will allow me to retain fade and balance functionality from the head unit. So I'm literally improving the factory stereo without losing any functionality at all, and it'll sound considerably better. Now, obviously the fact that I'm installing this means that I upgraded these crappy speakers. And initially when I got the LC7i, I thought that all channels actually have that bass roll-off functionality, but I was mistaking the only channel that has the bass correction functionality is channel three. So these two are not gonna have that, but I'm not too worried about that because those are gonna be my internal speakers. I really want that functionality for my subwoofer channel right there. Another feature that this LC7i has is that it has GTO technology, great turn on technology. And what that technology will do, it'll sense your speaker outputs and it'll turn on automatically. I don't prefer using that, but you have the option of using that GTO technology within the LC7i. So that eliminates the need to install a remote in line right there to turn the LC7i on whenever the car is on. The converter also has remote level control of channel three. That's your subwoofer channel. So if you wanted to, you can buy the remote level control and put the knob somewhere where it's accessible to you from the cabin. I'm not going to use that because my amplifier already has a remote gain control. But if your amplifier doesn't, you can use this control to vary its input gain remotely. Let me show you the jumper settings and what they each do. In order to get to the jumpers, we have to remove the cover, which is four screws. Here we have a ground isolation switch, and if you have any sort of whining with the alternator, you can mess with this switch right here and see if that can correct it, but only if you have issues. So we're gonna leave that alone for now. This one is your GTO switch, and the default is on. I'm gonna go ahead and change that right now because I don't want to use it. The next switch over, that one right there, is the auto mode on. And what that one does is that it's gonna automatically take your channel two input and route it to channel three, if you've got nothing connected here. So if you have something connected here, you would move that one to the lower spot, but I'm gonna leave it there because I'm not connecting anything to channel three right there. These switches right here are the ones for internal summing, and because I'm feeding it a full signal right here, I don't need internal summing, so I'm gonna leave those default as is. If I was feeding the LC7i separate highs, mids, and lows, then I would move those jumpers up so that the internal summing circuitry can combine them to a full signal up here. Those are all of your internal jumpers to set before installing the converter. Very easy thing to do. Okay, so I'm getting ready to set the gains on all of these components. And I wanted to give you a walkthrough of what the LC7i active line of converter is doing and how it's connected. First of all, you know, we have our input connections to the LC7i right here. A ground, 12 volts, remote in and remote out. My ground is going directly into the ground point right here which is the same ground point as all of the other components. The 12 volts is coming out of this power distribution right there. That's that red cable right there. And it's going underneath it and it's attaching to the 12 volts. The remote in is coming straight from the head unit and that's allowing this to turn on only when the stereo is on. So it's not just turning on and draining your battery when it's not supposed to. The remote out of the LC7i is connected to the remote connections on both the inline amp and this amp. So these two amplifiers are only gonna be on when the LC7i is on. The sound inputs are coming straight from the head unit and there, there are these eight wires right here. So I have four channels. So front left, front right, rear right, rear left. And they correspond on the other side. So these right here are going to be my rear speakers. These are gonna be my front speakers. And the only reason why I put my front speakers on channel two, since I don't have any input on channel three right here, is actually gonna copy this signal onto channel three just like that. So I connected my front speakers to channel two because that signal is usually stronger from factory head units. So that's where channel three is getting its output from. So as you can tell, channel three is going to this amplifier right here. So the LC7i is feeding the input of my amplifier, which is driving the sub. And then channel one and channel two are both connected to the inline amplifier and they're driving the four inside speakers. Each channel has independent output level controls. And of course you have here your AccuBase levels. You have your threshold right here. And this knob is, allows you to set when AccuBase sets in and the level allows you to set how strong 
AccuBase sets in. So that AccuBase right there accounts for the bass roll off that's present in these factory systems to save the speakers. I actually want to restore that bass and this is going to allow me to do that. If I had a premium sound system that for whatever reason I wasn't happy with, I could feed the LC7i for highs, mids and lows as they come out of the system. And the LC7i has internal summing that can actually sum those three different signals up and actually output a full signal to each channel. So that's pretty cool. I didn't need to use that functionality. My main reasons for using the LC7i was one, so I can restore that lost rolled off bass and two, so I can really dial in the gains of the amplifier. This is going to allow me very, very fine control. And it's also going to clean up the signal so that the amplifiers can amplify that process signal instead of amplifying the speaker level signals to begin with. I'll be able to set the output here to match the input sensitivity of the amplifier. And they both have their own separate input sensitivities. If you watched up to this point, I hope you got something out of this video. I go over setting the gains and AccuBase in a separate detailed video. So if you're interested, check out the video description. And if you want to see the whole sound system upgrade in my 2020 STI, be sure to save this playlist. That's going to do it for this video. If it was useful to you, don't forget to give it a like and consider subscribing for more content just like this. I'll see you next video. Take care.